Hey guys, and welcome back to the Homeschooling Mom. Welcome to video two on our series, Tips for Teaching Toddlers. So today, we're gonna to be talking about fostering a love for reading and um, how to get your toddler interested in reading. In my last video, I talked about attitude. And what I mean by attitude is that we want our children to enjoy school type activities. So um, the reason that it's important to develop a love for reading um, along with teaching our children things to do to develop those reading skills is because we want them to develop essentially a lifelong love of learning. Not only is reading foundational in teaching them all of their schoolwork, but it is also the first step towards um, creating an independence. So fostering this love for reading is just as important as actually teaching reading because it helps to develop this independence that will stick with them forever. And besides, who doesn't need more excuses to spend more time with your children? I mean, it's a win-win all the way around. When I got started with this, it was not so smooth sailing because I had not been reading to him. And so I'm going to start out with um, some tips that you can do for children who are not used to being read to. So let's get started. So tip number one, you want to start with short books. If you remember me talking in my last video, I talked about how toddlers don't just naturally have the ability to sit still for long periods of time. So this is part of building that up is you want to help them come in, but you don't want them to feel like they're being held hostage. So um, the way that you do that is you want to start with short books and you can encourage them, oh, come here, honey. Um, but you don't want to hold them hostage because if they feel like it's something that they have to do, then it's probably not something that they're going to just naturally start to enjoy doing. If they aren't really into it, you don't want to push. Getting through those first few books can be kind of hard, especially when you're first starting, if your child's not used to being read to. So um, one of the things that we did was I was just persistent. I would try again later that day. For us, I found that once the day has kind of calmed down and it was getting ready for bedtime, then that was really kind of the best time um, to get my toddler to be able to decide that he did want to cuddle up with mommy. And... Um, so finding that time of day can definitely be beneficial. But my, my tip is just to be persistent in trying to read your short book. Tip number two after um, reading, choosing a short book would be to make that short book lots of fun with silly voices and big movements. Now, I don't know about you, but this is not something that actually comes naturally for me. So I have to remind myself and kind of get myself in the mindset of, yay, we're going to have fun with this. We do a lot of movements while we're doing it. If the alligator is trying to eat it, then I might go like this and kind of tickle his belly for a second. Um, use silly voices and using big movements is definitely like the big key thing that got my toddler interested. Along comes a jellyfish. He floats through the ocean. Tentacles all trailing in a gentle locomotion. Hey, Mr. Fish, with your daily scary scowl. I wish you wouldn't do this with a grimace and a growl. Now, when we pick up a book, my toddler almost starts giggling just when I get the book out because he's so excited because he knows that it's going to be so much fun. Tip number three. You want to try to make it interactive. Um, let them point to things that are in the story. Um, let them talk about it. So instead of trying to rush through and hurry up and get it done like it's just another task on your to-do list, um, you want to really be in the moment so that you can create this fun learning environment, so that you can make this book hilarious and fun and a good time. So at the end, it should be fun for everybody. Your toddler should be giggling, you should be smiling, and um, it should be a lot of fun. They don't, don't shut them down. Don't shut down their questions. Don't shut down their pointing. And a pearl of advice for her pal to take in. Mom. That's a clean one. But the point is that you want to be interactive. You want it to be fun. You want to let them point to things, let them point out things. And you want to have conversations about the page as you're reading the story. If they don't get to be involved, then they're not going to be interested. So that's one way that you can shut it down is by not doing this. So it's really important. Um, and that's why tip number three is to let them point to the things that they want to do. Have conversations about it with them and let them be involved too. 
So my number four tip is that you want to ask them questions to get them interacting with the book. I kind of already talked about that a little bit with number three. They kind of go hand in hand. So um, tip number three was letting them point and letting them have conversations. Um, and tip number four is you bringing out conversation. So you want it to be interactive. You want to ask your toddler questions so that they will interact with the book. The reason that toddlers like reading the same books over and over and over again um, I'm not exactly sure, but it definitely works to their advantage because it helps to build their vocabulary. So reading a repetitive book is even more helpful when you're starting your learning to read journey. Reading repetitive books actually helps to build vocabulary and it helps to build their speech um, and their language skills. What it does is it, it, um, it exposes them to the same vocabulary words, the same speech patterns. When we read books, the way that they're written is a little bit different than the way that we typically talk. So um, reading a short repetitive book um, helps to really helps to really ingrain those new words into their brain so that they'll be able to use them and they'll be able to read them later. Now you have an excuse to read that book to them for the 18th time today. Yay! Now I don't know about you, but I am a list person. So um, for all my list people out there, I have made a list of all the things that I could think of that I know that reading helps to accomplish. So I'm going to share that with you. Um, the first thing on my list is that reading to your toddler helps to accomplish fostering a love of reading. So it helps them to love reading. Number two would be that it creates a desire in them to want to learn to read. It helps to squash their resistance to wanting to learn their letter sounds and learn how to read because they're being exposed to those things. Number three, it helps to build up their language skills. Hearing them, talking to them, having those conversations with them that you're gonna be having during the book is actually going to help build up their language. It helps with their speech and it also helps with their vocabulary. I've already talked about those two things a little bit. It also introduces um, not just new words and new vocabulary, but new ideas. Things that you don't get to experience or you don't have the ability to experience in your everyday home life, you can expose them to those ideas, to those new animals, to those new places and new environments. So the next thing would be that it strengthens their attention span. Sitting down and reading to your child actually helps to build up their attention span so that they'll be able to sit still for short periods of time. Um, that will kind of get longer as time goes on. And they'll learn that even sitting still, they can still do things that are fun. So um, it helps to strengthen their attention span a little bits at a time, which is a good thing. And then the last thing that it does is it helps to build your relationship with your child. So reading is something that becomes a, a special time for you to just sit with your children and to spend time with them, where you're focusing on just them, just the moment, just what's going on. It also helps to build those relationships with your children, which is definitely, obviously, something everybody wants more of. So there's my list. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. <laughs> and another thing that I wanted to mention was that it's also a good idea to... Um, to have books that are available on your child's level. So we have a couple of little like um, sling style bookshelves that are right on my toddler's level that we keep in the living room. So after you start reading to them, you'll notice that they'll start going to the shelf. Once it's something that they enjoy, they'll go to their little bookshelf, they'll be tucking, taking out books, and they'll be laying on the floor pretending like they're reading. And they might just be reciting what they remember of the book. They might be babbling. They might be talking about the pictures or just pointing. But that is a good sign. So having some books available that are on their level, that they're able to get to, um, that they can be exposed to as almost like a toy on a daily basis is great because it will really help to pique their interest and give them the opportunity to put their hands on and to be able to play with those things. Um, so I will put a link to that in the description below um, if you're interested in seeing what I'm talking about with the Sling Bookshelf. So the last thing that I want to talk about is what can we do if you can't afford to buy books? I know in most places there is a library that is available. So I would definitely encourage you go, to go to the library. Um, germs are usually only able to stay on books for a certain amount of time, 6, 12, 18 hours. So the chances of you... Um, 
bringing home germs from the library really is very small. So I would definitely encourage you to use your local library and you can check out books for free. And that's great because then you can keep them for a couple weeks and you can return them and you can switch them out. If going to the library is not an option, um, for whatever reason, if you don't want to have one available, or if you're just like, ooh, that's gross. Um, I know some people really have an aversion to going to the library or using borrowed books. Some of the things that we've done to try to keep books available in our home is um, I found this really awesome website called Thrift Books. It's thriftbooks.com, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. Um, but most of the books on there are only like 3 to $4.00. And they also give free shipping in the United States for orders that are $10 or more. So you could get like three books that are 3 to $4. And most of the time you'll be in your $10 free shipping range. And you can ha you can add, um, you know, those three books to your library, right? Like as soon as you get them. So um, another thing that we've done in the past is we have utilized things like the Kindle app and Google Play Books and... Um, I know that our library, if you have a library card, you can get access to Hoopla, digital books online. Um, and in the past, we've also used Epic Books, the website too. So there are options out there. If you can only read to your children digitally, there are a lot of free options for digital books that you can rent on Google Play, on Kindle app, and on different things like that. So. Just because you don't have money to invest in going out and buying a bunch of books for your children does not mean that you're not able to read to them. There are still options. You just have to take the time to um, to look into it. No more excuses. Um, one thing that's really cool about our library is they have the ability to order it, especially with all the COVID stuff going on. They have the ability to be able to order it and just pick it up. So I can go onto their website. I can put in my library card number. I can pick out the books that I want to get, and once I pick out the books that I want to get, then I just have to wait like a day or two, and they'll get them all ready for me, and then I just show up during the, my pickup time, and I can pick up all the books that I want. So I really love that because I don't like going places, and it really, really is helpful when you have a busy schedule or if you have a lot of kids. Another thing we've done in the past is we have a library day. My children absolutely loved it when we had a library day for school each week because they would get to go and look at books themselves and get to touch them and check them out and that kind of thing. So if that's something that you're into and if your library is allowing it right now, it's definitely something that your kids will probably love. So I think that that's all that I have to say about that. So start reading to your toddler today. Um, make it fun, make it interesting, use lots of big movements and silly voices, and watch your child's interest in reading grow. There you have it. I'm going to put a link in the description below to some of the books that my children have enjoyed over the years. Um, some ones that are good for toddlers and that are available in board book form so that if you're interested in buying them, you can go ahead and do that. Next time, we are going to be talking about singing. Um, singing, rhyming, and um, why that is important. So thank you for stopping by and be sure to check the links in the description below. If this video helped you, make sure you hit like and subscribe so that you can receive notifications to more homeschooling videos um, as soon as they're available. See you next time. <sighs> I'm so exhausted.